Boogie down. What's up? How you doing? Wanna bring to the mic one of our own. She's been in two of my films. Rosario Dawson. Mike just wanted to get on stage twice, so I'm supposed to introduce him. <sighs> okay. <sighs> I love you. I'm here in the love, and I got to throw that right back at you. All right. Bear with me. I have a lot to say. <sighs> okay. So. Today, I heard some uh, obfuscating of facts, some information that was being misconstrued, very misleading and very divisive. Today, a lot of news outlets and the other Democratic candidate was... No, 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 no. We're better than that. Now, there's this rumor that is being perpetuated that Trump talking about abortion and punishing women and doctors then for it, uh, that somehow Bernie Sanders was saying that that wasn't an important issue. Regardless of the fact that he's always stood up for women's rights, equal pay, equality, and is pro-choice, which the other Democratic candidate very well knows. There is this rumor that is pitching out there that he, because he's saying that we're giving Trump too much time on the airways and we need to stop feeding into that hate and talking about the issues, that somehow that meant that he doesn't care about women's issues. Shame on you, Hillary. No, oh, sorry, hold on. Let me watch my tone. because we very, very much want a debate, which she already agreed to. And considering that in 2008 there were 26 debates, and she held Obama's feet to the fire saying that she would debate anytime, anywhere, because that's what you should do when you're trying to run the country. Let's very much hope that she does come. So I will say with a smile on my face that I'm excited about the fact that I don't have to vote against someone, that I get to vote for someone who hasn't called undocumented people illegals, like the other Democratic candidate, or called our children who needed care super predators that needed to be brought to heal. Who called people on welfare deadbeats? No. Well, yes, she is under FBI investigation. Thank you. That's not getting promoted very much, but she is about to be interviewed in a little bit. But no. The reality, when you're saying the types of things that have been said and trying to misconstrue and obfuscate the facts, you're trying to divide people. Now, I appreciate Gloria Steinem saying, I'm sorry for saying that us women Bernie supporters are only here because the boys are here, though I'm really glad to see quite a lot of females and males here. And also this push and this idea that you're only white. Well, my daddy, my biological daddy anyway, is uh, Irish. So Bernie didn't need to make me white. But apparently all y'all are white. That's crazy. <laughs> I must be having issues with my eyes. No, the reality is when they're talking about that stuff is that they're trying to divide us. They're trying to say that only Trump supporters are racist, 
which are there are a lot of racists who follow Trump, but they're not all racists. That all followers of Bernie are all white males, but that's not true either. And I think it's actually pretty amazing that when you're seeing in really large populations of white males and white females in certain states that have been poorly talked about, that they're there cheering for justice and equality, specifically racial and environmental and beyond. That's something to celebrate. It's a beautiful thing. So this is what Bernie meant when he was talking about Trump getting too much attention and distracting us from the issues. Trump is getting $1.9 billion worth of free media. Bernie's gotten about 321 million. And most of that's been with a lot of eye rolling and saying that he should be dismissed and out of the equation. Why do you think that is? Do you think that's an accident? You gotta really think about the fact that they're trying to say vote against him and forget about him. So what does that mean? That we have to vote for the other Democratic candidate? No. We're not in the general election. We're in the primary and everybody should have their say. So I don't have to vote against somebody because I get to vote for someone who's on our side and says no fracking. Who marched with Martin Luther King. And who, ha who can draw a crowd <sighs> that makes me dizzy with happiness and love and excitement. She had a fraction of that many people yesterday at the Apollo and failed to mention that when she was a senator, two million people were stopped because of stop and frisk that she said nothing about. In 2006 alone, 506,000 people were stopped and frisked, 90% of which were innocent. Because shockingly, you can't judge a criminal by the color of their skin. And racial profiling is not okay. It is unjust and unnecessary, and we need to end that. <laughs> so I just want to say something because I love you. And I'm a New Yorker. My mom was raised on 137th Street here in the Bronx, born in Lincoln Hospital, which since burned down. I'm from Coney Island. Grew up in the Lower East Side. Ooh, ooh. And I want to say that we don't need to be divided. We need to be reaching out and talking to those folks who are supporting Trump. Why? Because they're supporting him for a reason. They're standing up behind him because he's against the establishment as well. And they're literally standing behind the guy who they know is going to go into the Oval Office and go, you're fired. I can understand that. but I'm supporting the guy who's looking at all of us and saying you're hired to help him do that. And I know that means a lot to you because I know New Yorkers and we are not interested in being bamboozled. Right, Spike? Or duped or divided by our race, our gender, our age. That's the past when people did have to vote for the lesser of two evils, but we don't have to do that. The reality is when 9-11 happened, people came together. And they saw when the Syrian refugees were walking something that mirrored their experience when we had to walk across bridges and reach out. And we wanted to reach and hold them back in. We celebrated when there was a blackout for three days because we weren't attacked. And my mom was walking down the street in the Lower East Side going, neighbors, bring out your meat and meet your neighbors. So we could share our perishables. And people were making love in the fire escapes and dancing in drum circles naked in the parks. 
walking through Times Square because they could see the stars for the first time, taking care of each other during Hurricane Sandy, making sure our neighbors had medicine and food who couldn't walk down the stairs, charges, generators so they could get their phones charged because that's now as important as water. <laughs> marched against the bailout because they knew the people needed the bailout, not the banks. Which they're still getting bailed out, so if they were too big to fail them, then, you know, what does that look like for us voting in the future? You know, this is, this is a community that I love. A place that I grew up that was the melting pot, a center of the world. You can go anywhere and people know New York. You can get, you know, Chinese food roll, you can get a slice of pizza. You can jump on a train and go to Philly and get yourself a Philly cheesesteak. We go to Coney Island to ride the cyclone and get a headache from it because wow, those wooden ro roller coasters are dangerous. We go to New Jersey so we can go in the water park. We go upstate going across the Washington State Bridge so that we can, so we can go and be in mountains and greenery and see bears and walk like little engines like my dad taught me to do, which was dangerous because they were bears. <laughs> and we've seen what gentrification does to our community. You know, Broadway, Broadway is an old native Indian trail. And for the first time because of gentrification, it has been disturbed and interrupted. And we get that. We know our history. And yeah, someone, I forgot to mention Cuchi Frito too. Sorry, I heard that. I just, Remember, I have to say that. So I want to say, I love seeing you all here. But don't complain to me if you didn't make it your business to bring at least five people with you to vote. At least five. To show the world that we knew the bailout was wrong, to show the world that we knew we weren't supposed to go to Iraq and invade that country. We weren't. That had nothing to do with 9-11. And the mass media that sold at us that is also the mass media that's trying to sell us the person who voted for it. By the way, there is a uh, sit-in at CNN headquarters on Sunday in LA, I think at noon, if you want to tell anybody to be there because they're working against us right now. And understand, if Bernie doesn't win, net neutrality will be a very big issue. Because they don't like this, all us coming together and talking to each other and organizing each other despite them. There is a lot at stake, a lot. So vote for the person who voted no for the Patriot Act twice. Vote for the person who said no to the Iraq war and didn't waste trillions of dollars, but more importantly, hundreds of thousands of lives that started ISIS and the destabilization of the Middle East that we are still feeling the repercussions of today. That doesn't apologize like somehow that brings lives back or the soldiers that we did come back suddenly it makes, erases their PTSD. Someone who doesn't think that regime change is a good idea of foreign policy in Honduras and Syria and Libya and beyond. Someone who's telling us to vote together. Someone who's gonna go into the Oval Office and keep the door open and open up the blinds and the windows and say, let's get to work. I'm excited to work for Bernie Sanders, because I'm excited to work for all of you. All right, Obama. I wish that this time I was introducing him, but I'm introducing Spike Lee, who still calls me Lala. But I just want to say thank you so, 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 so much for being here. 
and showing what New York is really about. Coming together and understanding that real change comes from the bottom up. Remember, when Martin Luther King was killed, it wasn't because he was pushing on the civil rights movement. He was able to achieve that. It's because he was coming together and asking for a poor man's march on Washington. Bringing black, white, and brown together, talking about how we needed to address our foreign policy and what that has done to devastate and destabilize so many places, so much so that those people are coming here and many people want to build a wall to stop them. Spike Lee is going to come to the stage and drop the mic. I love you. We can do this, not me, us. Rosario Dawson, give it up. That is a hard act to follow. I'm a filmmaker, not the, the great. Let me ask a question. Rosario dropping science. She was dropping science. It's great here to be in the Bronx. The boogie down. Glad to be here. I'm glad we're out here to support our guy, Bernie from Brooklyn. BK, where you at? It's Brooklyn in the house. Don't hate. It's all love. It's all love. It's all love. Look, we all know that this thing is rigged. Is is the senator just talked about many, many times. It's rigged. They don't, it's Rosario State. They don't want to see us together. Say it again. Got my man. Where's Obama? Where's Obama at? Where are you at? Obama. Turn face to the crowd. <laughs> Dead ringer. I thought that was him for sure. But we cannot let separate us. It's beautiful. This is great things about New York City. Diversity. Look around. This is what makes us the greatest city on this earth. And the Bronx, home of the 27-time world champion New York Yankees. Are those Met fans booing? I thought we were unified up here. Unified. Unified. Anyway. We cannot go for the okie doke. Have you ever seen the three card money? You can't win. You cannot win with the three, cam, three card money. It's the flim flam, the okie doke, the Rudy Poop, high jinks, shenanigans. We can't go for that. We have to, everybody has to register to vote. We have to vote. And we have to talk to our parents. Because the old generation, they're on this Clinton thing. And we got to talk to our older parents and get their mind right. It's great to be here. Again, I'm not a public speaker. We got to register to vote. New York City is the greatest city on earth. And Bernie has to win. New York City. Bernie has to win Weather York. Even Staten Island. All right, now I'm going to bring to the stage. Residente, later, peace to Vegas. <laughs>